What's going on guys? It's your girl Angie Snatch with Snatch Investigations coming at you with another episode of An Unbiased Truth, Decoding the Brother Polite Trial. And today we're going to talk about Renentet's mother, Lorena Woody, aka Anuket Baket Akiba. I want to give her a personal thank you and kudos for being an outstanding mother. She's a holistic health consultant in my household. She, she nurtures us. She takes good care of us. She is an educator. Okay, she not only leads the homeschool group, but obviously pioneering in the homeschool movement, movement in general. And the job she's doing with the children is phenomenal because she goes the distance. She does the online private school curriculums in addition to implementing what I write, the publications that I was putting out. She integrates that into the curriculum. She takes the younger children in our family household to the zoos, science museums, and the likes. She goes super hard. She's very enthusiastic when it comes to our children's education when it comes to their health. And idealistically, those are two very prominent things that family mothers have to incorporate into their life, into their lifestyles in order for them to achieve the prescribed level of success that they need to have. She has so many trades, uh, and as far as her entrepreneurial mentality, she's strong enough and intelligent enough to thrive in this world without her. And it's a blessing that she still remains with me. So I just want to say thank you so much because I love you. I appreciate you. And I want everyone to know how great you are to skill set to do well. They may have to get themselves acclimated to the system, and that's okay. And many will quit in the process to get to the level that she's on. She's on a phenomenal level, a superior level, and it's not that no other sisters can't get to the same level. However, I'm just blessed that she is the asset that she is to the family, because we need it, because we travel a whole lot. So again, I can't thank her enough. I appreciate her. The best. And all the children in our household can test how great she is. You are great. I wish you happy birthday. Anuket Baket Akiba uh, met Brother Pillai. She already had three children prior to becoming one of his wives. She had Renintet, her younger sister, and then another younger brother. Renintet and her sister, Mesquinette, uh, they share the same father who is Eric Bonds, pictured here. Now, Lorena was a part of the Nuwapian Nation, just as polite was. And I think that it's, it's important because I'm starting to feel like a lot of what we will see unfold in Polite's current case with the allegations that the prosecution will tie in some of that background of Dr. York because it does all seem to tie back to Dr. York, that ideology, New Wapians, uh, then turning to New Covenant, something that Dr. York had in 92 or 93 that Polite is saying something that is something different now, but it all ties back there. Uh, what I found was in 2008, there was a, let me pull it up. So in, I found this picture. This is a New ball in 2008 where you see um, Mesquinet in the picture, Anuket, Amunet and Ma'at and this is in 2008 so this all though they then become new covenant following their husband or her husband polite they all still have that foundation in new opianism we've been a sacred society for 25 years now now it's time for people to know what we've been keeping secret 
So very early on with uh, Anu Cat coming into the fold of the family, as you saw in that video that I posted in the intro, she was the homemaker. She was the caretaker and things like that. Uh, Renente gravitated to Amunet and got her interest in film from Amunet. Uh, I found at the end of the credits in some of Polite's videos starting back, dating back to 2010, you'll find uh, Renente listed as a casting director. So she really gravitated towards Amunet. Now her sister, Mesquinet, she, uh, with her mother, would work at the bookstore catering the events and she had was famous for her fried mushrooms she ended up coming out with a book as well on alkaline diet and she did uh tours with Amunet. so the girls really did gravitate to Amunet. she seemed to be the den mother of everyone i spent the weekend and that's what took me so long reading renente's book uh in my, house, in my father's house, there are many mansions. I do want to say at the outset that I, I believe that she did write portions of this book. Only because I know children that speak at a high level. So I didn't find anything that she wrote in, her, in those testimonial portions so astronomical. Now from the solar, what is it? The solar... Um, numerology thing that looked like a copy and paste uh from Bud the polite but there were some excerpts in the book that i wanted to pull up but first let me um play this short clip of lorena and i'll come back and pull out the excerpt you know people say that you are depressed women yeah that you are depressed i'm raising a farm of depressed women so these smiles that you have in your face are all false because you've been obviously punched in your mouth. Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay. So first I want to say no one wants to admit when they're depressed or that they've been through a depression. We all like to put on that mask for the world that everything is okay. But this is a going theme for the women that are in polite life. So this excerpt that you see on your screen is from Renente's book, In My Father's House, There Are Many Mansions. The, she, there's a portion of the book where she interviews the wives in the house as well as her uh, sister. The brother is not in the book, but as well as her sister, Mesquinet, and they kind of give their testimonials. There's two parts. So I wanted to read this first part from her mother, Anuket. When I was 19, I met my daughter's father. He was 29 years old, had three children. She's talking about Eric Bonds here by three different women, and after a year with him, I found out that he was still married to one of his daughter's mother. After five years and two children later, I came to realize that he could not and would not love me and realized that it was time to move on. I was 26 years old when I met my son's father. The foundation in which we tried to build a relationship was more than just shaky. I was hustling in order to make ends meet, and he lied to me about everything about himself. We spent five years trying to build a relationship on a bed of lies and deceit, verbal and physical abuse, which was like planting flower seeds on the concrete. My spirit grew tired, and I had to get away from him. All I wanted was for someone to love me and see something in me that was so significant and interesting that nothing would turn him away from me. My stress level was high. I suffered with migraine headaches every month, high cholesterol, and severe acne. My self-esteem was very low and was depressed. I didn't want my children to grow up without a father, and I didn't want them to grow up watching me upset, stressed, and unhappy all of the time. Eventually, I was diagnosed with cervical cancer. Through my healing process, I learned that the love and affection I never got from my father, I expected it from the men in my life. And although my mother tried to fill that void, she couldn't because the only other place that it could come from was myself. That's what my father was supposed to teach me. That's the reason he was supposed to love me in the first place. He was supposed to teach me. So here on, in the book, we see that she's talking about experiencing depression. 
a layer of why I think she even engaged and why polite uh, is such a light to some of these women. In our adult lives, we search for what we didn't have as a child. So if you didn't have a father as a child, not only will you maybe search for it as an adult, but if you run into a relationship where that father leaves the house, you'll be it will trigger your traumas and your PTSD. So sometimes you will settle or create this foundation on a fantasy or just on a hope because you want to give your children something different from what you experience. But what we need to have with our children is conversations because I want to read this portion. This is now Renente speaking about how she was feeling. And this is at the time of this book because prior to this passage, she's talking about how she's crying as she's writing this book. Both my sister and I grew a bit discontent with the male gender since our father was not around. In fact, when we would reflect on our father's presence, our feelings were very mixed because we love our biological father. And at the same time, we bear witness to the violent aspects of their relationship, mommy and our father. I used to wonder to myself at times when my mother was with my father, how come they got together if they had so much problems with each other? I always wanted to know if maybe there was a way to have some kind of foresight in terms of the potential of relationships so that a lot of conflicts could be avoided in advance. From a child's perspective, relationship problems really affected us significantly. My sister would cry in the bathroom for extended periods of time and would never tell nobody that she was doing this for quite some time. Meanwhile, I was I always used to ask myself, how could I avoid having negative relationships with someone when I get older? At a certain point, I really needed some clarity on what a relationship was. I was very confused and I did not know how to express this. All I knew was that everyone that I that seems that I seemed to be around always was breaking up or getting into more arguments than it appeared that they loved each other. Like I said earlier, I always wanted to know how could two people agree to be with each other and then seemingly overnight appear to have just met each other the night before. These are this is a testimony from a mother and a daughter um experiencing the same thing on different spectrums and I really feel like you can tell that the conversations weren't had that maybe uh and this is me just assuming that maybe uh a new cat focused more on trying to model a father in the household than having that conversation with her daughter because a lot of times our children see everything that's happening they experience this life with us and sometimes we have to pause and take a step back and understand that they uh they know they know what's going on and we have to have those conversations because here you have one daughter crying in the bathroom the other daughter questioning how can I avoid this because this becomes a norm and they're feeling like this is abnormal how can I avoid this and it's a prime time for a predators to come in in these spaces but also for bad female role models to come in this is when that social media starts to come into place because we start to look for external um approval so there's one other part that I wanted to look at and this is Lorena speaking An Anuket Renintet's mother again and she's talking about uh how she was approached with this particular relationship and how she sees this particular relationship. I'm going to read on the second page because I don't want it to be too wordy. You can screenshot it. I was on the come up when I was approached with this unique arrangement. I had a job that not only paid the bills, but also paid for my education. But I was still struggling to get to work take care of home, and give my children the attention they needed. And as for time for myself, that was sacrificed for study time during my lunch break. I was on the verge of becoming burnt out. I would take time from work for myself, but it would turn into me running the errands I never had the time for. 
So although I wasn't exactly looking for a relationship at that moment, I was open to try. This was the first time someone approached me for a relationship with a business proposition. Remember Brother Polite wrote that book, uh, Cooperation or Corporation, I think it's called. I was intrigued. This meant that I could save $125 a week on childcare quit my job and homeschool my children and make enough money while doing for self and kind. And if a personal relationship sparked from there, then we would pursue it. I couldn't lose in a relationship like this, but at the same time, I couldn't understand how a woman could share her man, especially after fighting down to tooth and nail, trying to keep the ones I had in the past myself. At the same time, the one woman that I knew he had at the time, even though he had Riot at the time, I'm assuming because he said in other interviews that uh, him and Amunet, you discuss it with the first wife and it is part of the wives jobs to get those women comfortable, acclimated to the system and also report back to him on whether they think that it will work out or not. At the same time, the only woman that I knew he had at the time seemed very content and secure, something I want to feel in a relationship. That's when I knew that there was something in this, if nothing else, that I could learn. Not only was I able to learn about different ways to make a living, but I learned a lot about my own work ethics and habits. Now, this book came out in 2010. She's about 32 at the time. She ended up having Polite's baby three three years later in 2013. Now, I wanted to put uh, just a little bug out there. Queen Afua seems to be an elder in the community. Now, she comes from the Nwapian Nation, and she also did... Um, was either a supporter of New Covenant or a member of New Covenant. And I know that uh, Nwapians generally work under Amun, hidden or secrecy, but I'm wondering as an elder woman with them writing this and you got Renente seeking clarity and kind of um, Lorena dealing with her trauma, does she do some type of one-on-one -on -one and speak to the men and women in that community on how to deal with that? Because it's some spaces that we have to create for mental health when dealing with these things. Not everything is a fix, through, in my opinion, through spirituality and religion. Mental health is real, and in our community, we avoid it and we go other ways. Let's fast forward to 2014. 2014... So in 2013, Lorena has Polite's daughter, Nasute. She is a girl, and they're not in hiding. They actually live in Ohio uh, near her parents. So he brings this case about in February of 2014. Nasute is born December 2013. He brings this case about in February 2014. And let's just look at a little bit of the background. So I know that... I've seen it reported that uh, she left when she was pregnant, but I think she stayed after the baby and left somewhere in 2014. I can't put my finger on where because uh, that video I showed you earlier was a Mother's Day post Polite made in 2014. And I do think that she gained weight during that time. It looks like an after baby weight to me, but let's go into the background. So plaintiff in this case is Brother Polite. Brings this complaint alleging that since January 20 of 2014, the re defendant, Lorena Woody, the mother of his child, has continuously denied and deprived him of his fundamental right of access to his child without due process of law. Plaintiff claims the defendant, Woody, acted under the influence, advice, and instruction of defendant New York City Administration for Children's Services. Plaintiff alleges that he has been credibly informed that ACS has made certain promises to defendant Woody, including relocating her into a new apartment and providing her a monthly stipend on the condition that she completely cut plaintiff off from having access to his biological child and fulfilling his parental duties. This is a case that Polite brought against Lorena in 2014. 
I'm not sure if he has no contact with his child at all anymore, only because I have to give him a little bit of credit because Polite would, um, in my opinion, Polite would be filing another case. Like paperwork is his thing. Like paperwork is my thing. Paperwork is his thing. Even in this lawsuit, I mean, he called out the whole city. He was coming for the commissioner, all of that. I think that they worked this out on some type of back end and especially them being, having those roots in the Nwapian nation um, built on some level of secrecy, some level of Freemasonry that things are handled quietly. So I think that there was some type of arrangement worked out with them there. I do know that uh, Lorena is in Ohio and that Nasute actually plays for a Christian school. Uh, she's an athlete. So the reason why I say I'm not sure when this happened or when she left, not only is that video from May 2014, but these pictures with Queen Afua, they're having a family dinner. Uh, they are from January 5th, 2014. So I would say, uh, it's likely that sometime between January 5th and January 20th that they had some type of discourse and disagreement that then prompted him to less than a month later filing the uh, New York City case. It was actually a civil rights case um, infringement or on, his, on some type of freedoms. But this is a picture from January 5th. Now, Renente at the time, because there's been conversation about Renente going back with Brother Polite. So I did a little math. This case is filed in 2014. Renente is born in 1997. So if we subtract 2014, subtract 1997, she was 17 years old at the time of this split, if it occurred in 2015. Me being a realistic parent, and also always trying to give people the benefit of the doubt. I'm going to assume that her mother, yes, wanted her to come with her, but that she did leave some autonomy up to Renente. She does give me um, signs of a child that has been uh, sexually abused, allegedly, at some point in her life. Because usually what you see in those type of uh, cases is hypersexuality, judging by some of the things that uh, Renente has chosen to do with her life. However, she also, I, I do have to put some onus on the women in her life, in her life because she did gravitate to Amunet and Ra'at, and they pretty much dress like si sex sirens all the time. I mean, it's club night. No matter what time of day or where you do, what you're doing, what restaurant you're going to, even if you're going horseback riding, you're going to be a bad bee on a horse. You know what I'm saying? So to some extent, we have to put some onus on role models because you can have a child that hasn't been touched or sexually molested, but has had those type of role models in their household. So it just becomes a norm. Um, the last thing I want to say is, I'm not sure if, also, I'm not sure if Renente is supported by Polite. She seems to kind of be living on her own. I found these posts from uh, 2020 and 2019 in Los Angeles where she's doing a roommate search. And honestly, I don't think these people are hiding. I think there is this indoctrination of secrecy where you know not to talk about it. I wouldn't be surprised if not in their small communities in sex that there aren't um, newsletters going out or some conversation being had. But this is Renente's um, roommate search from 2019, 2020. Now, I do find that interesting since Polite has raved over the years that his children are already millionaires, they're tax lien fund, they're kind of encroaching on being billionaires, and that she's um, actually actively searching for a roommate. Um, Lorena Woody is in Ohio, Anuket Baket Akiba. I know a lot of people say that I'm sure she has a lot to tell. I think she probably is in a space in her life because her parents are in Ohio as well. I think she in a space in her life where she don't want no parts of none of this because she also understands, like I'm beginning to understand 
that all of these people, all of them, have the same roots from the same bookstores, the same Dr. York brought consciousness to all of these people. So in my opinion, all of them are offshoots of the Dr. York ideology. Some good, some bad. But I wanted to bring that to you guys. I'm dropping another video today because I saw that there was movement in the Brother Palate case. Hmm. Let's see what that all means. All right, guys. I'll talk to you later. Angie Snatch.